Hello and welcome to the class today. Today we're going to draw a Rottweiler. Interesting class, lots of techniques because we need to learn how to draw dark hair in order to get the Rottweiler correct. So I'm quite looking forward to it. It's going to be great fun. Let me show you what the picture looks like and then we'll plan it out from there. Alrighty, so if you are a patron, you can go and download all the reference material. There's the color photograph, there's a black and white photograph, there's a sketch template, and so on. The link to my website is below. As you can see, we have lots of dark hair to draw today. So the secret to, to drawing dark hair when, you, when you're working with color, I mean, when you're painting and stuff, is that, can you see there's like that bluey haze inside all the highlights? In other words, the black reflects the sunlight color. So the blue comes from the sky. And all those really white bits over there actually got a bit of yellow in them from the, from the sunlight. Or possibly even from the clouds. So that's when, you, when you're painting and stuff. But now we're working in, in black and white. So it's just simply you've got high, high contrasts. That you need to uh, that you need to take care of. So look out for those high contrast because that's what's going to show you that you're working with a blackhead dog. Because a common mistake I find the guys make is that they'll they'll try and because it's a dark dog, they try and make everything dark. But look here, we've got all the way from white to black. And it's those black bits here that tell you that this is a is is a black dog and not a a white or a brown dog or whatever. All right, so we'll start off just by establishing those initial tonal values. So I've got a piece of paper here, and I'll just take a any dark pencil, six B, eight B, anything like that, and just rub over the paper to fill it up with graphite and then I've got a just a piece of t-shirting material which I use and I'll, I'll rub over here to pick up some of that graphite and then I'll put it down here on the on the drawing in the places where I see it so what I'm going to do I'm actually going to put my finger inside this cloth so I'm using my finger essentially as a as a brush or a pencil Yeah, so let me know what, what dog you've got at home. Do you have a Rotty? So what I'm doing is I'm basically putting... There where I see the dark values. I'm going to put them down first. And then you can see it, it shades lighter to over there. And then here's that little darker area. So I'll start with a dark bit. And then I'll just work my way upwards. So the idea is not to get this perfect. So the idea here is just to get, get yourself a good feel for where all these tonal values are. So as you draw, you, you know You've got certain lines that you've drawn and you're adding tonal value over them so those lines of yours could disappear so just use your eraser to bring those those lines back so that you don't lose them because what happens now with this whole process that we're doing now is it just lays down a foundation. Then you don't have to go and fill this up with hair. So it saves you a lot of time. Trying to get all these dark 
values in here with little hair strokes. So you can see I start here by the dark and then I just work my way lighter. As that graphite that's now on the on the cloth runs out. That's all this here has, even though it's light, it has tonal value underneath. So I'm just going to add some tonal value over that as well. But like I say, as you do, don't lose your lines. If you need to, just come back in with your eraser and just re-establish them. Here's a little darker bit over here. So as you're doing this, eventually the graphite that's on your on your paper runs out. So then just rub over it to give it a new layer. So I'll do that off screen. And that way I can do it quickly. I'm getting in all those darks. That's where I know where they are. And then everything else, I'm just giving a layer. Even the white bits, everything gets a layer. That layer, for now, I'm going to leave all these little stones and goodies. So that layer now allows me to, to lift out highlights as we go along. dark bits here by the nose there by that mouth but we could probably put something there but it's a bit it's a bit skinny it's a bit too narrow to put it in with the with a finger like this and then here here's definitely some some goodies over there right, so i'm just making sure i'm not losing any of my any of my marks. Especially around important areas here like the the nose and so on. You don't want to lose any of these guys. When I'm working with something complicated like this, what I'll also often do is I'll take my my sketch. So after I've done my sketch work, I'll lay a piece of tracing paper over it and I'll transfer those sketch marks again. So that way I can lay that over my drawing and uh, bring them back in again. 
if you're not sure where a uh, where a mark was all right so now we're going to start establishing the the very darks so what you're going to do is take a, a really dark pencil like say a six or an eight b or so on and just take some of that graphite and just scratch it onto your paper to give yourself some graphite dust like that now you're going to pick up that graphite dust like this and now you can draw with it so that's going to give you darker than what this original did And I'm going to just work in some of these really darks. So what I do is I, I, I take a whole pencil or two or three. I've got graphite sticks that I buy. It looks like this. So that's a Faber-Castell 9B. And I just use some uh, sandpaper. And I sandpaper till eventually I've got a whole little bottle full. So I'm going to take these. I'm going to get these really dark bits in here nice and dark because here at the back can you see everything's out of focus so here we're not going to even try and draw any kind of hair effect or anything like that in fact if you do it, it actually hurts the drawing because then it brings all the stuff at, that's at the back forward and then you lose a lot of that distance that you could have had in the drawing Now you don't have it anymore because it's now all all detailed. And by the time you've done this, now you should be able to have a good feel for what's going on here. With a little bit of imagination, you should be able to now see your dog. So this is all the very dark bits at the back. Nothing over here. Nothing over there. There we do need to get details. So we can't go too much too dark with this. Otherwise we won't see our actual hair effect. All right, so I'm just going to use my brush, soft brush, just to get rid of any excess. Little bits that are there. There seems to be another little darker denture or something. Okay, so for this back bit, I'm going to just take just a, a 9B pencil. So let's maybe put down that over there. So you can see whatever color pencil I'm using is is the the grade of pencil so that's purple so i'm working with a 6b if, if i use a green pencil then i'm working with an hb and so on All right, so here i'm just gonna do very basic little shadings just to get these tonal values and things correct So 
So now remember in these dark bits, don't be shy. Go really dark because that's what's telling the, the viewer that the, the dog that they're looking at is a black dog. So if you don't get these guys nice and dark, it's not going to look like a black dog at the end of the day. So those few, there are a few little suggestions of his. I think for now we'll just, uh, without pressing hard, you let the pencil do all the work for you and give you the, the darkness that you're looking for. So for now, we'll just add all this darkness in. So what I'm concerned about now are tonal values. Just want to get these tonal values more correct. If you need to, even now and again, also just give it a just give it a wipe, just to even out those those tonal values, so that it's not so stripey from the pencil. All right, so can you see over here? We've got just a little bit of a little bit of highlight happening. So I'm just going to take my eraser. And just roughly lift them out. Maybe we don't want really detail here. So don't try and get any crazy details or anything like that. Here's that little ring. I'm assuming that's where the, the leash clips onto. So let's just keep that, that area there nice and uh, nice and light. What we can do is just add a nice, sharp outline to that for now. So that we don't lose its shape. So you can see here I am using the, the chisel point pencils. Seems to be around, I've lost that line a little bit there. Seems to be somewhere around there, in that vicinity. Yeah, I'm actually quite happy to make this a little bit darker around that ear. And I'm going to tell you why. We'll make that ear, when we get the ear into his color, then... Uh, It would a lighter thing always appears closer and a darker thing appears further away. So because the ear would then be lighter, he would appear closer to you. And that would suspend that ear nicely in the in the air. So I'm using the chisel point pencil simply because it's going to um, allow me to cover large areas nice and quick. Right, so here I'm just adding a little bit of just a few little wiggles and squiggles just to suggest some hairs, but I'm not going to try and add any details. It's all about just getting those, those contrasts in there. And getting the tonal values correct. That's more what I'm worried about than anything else. If you lift out too much, then just take your cloth and just wipe over it. 
and that'll tone him back down again so then he won't be so so bright all right so i think that's probably enough for down there let's go up to here there's a nice little highlight bit sticking out over there nice little highlight bit over there So I don't want any hard lines over here, so I'll just use my blending stump. Just to soften that out. Okay, let's take a look here at the top of the ear. We've got that light line coming down there, but directly next to it on this side it's a little bit darker so just a quick little shading in there and that must tie up with that line over there can you see it's going behind the ear so we need to get to that line over there to meet for all of that to make sense So if you don't know how to make this little blending stump, there is a, a link to the video inside the inside the this video's description. Yeah, here's another little highlight running down there. So what these little highlights and things are is as that the hairs or or the, or the folds in the skin bunch over like this then they get a highlight and as they flatten down they, they'll they'll get an even color and there where they meet they'll get a little shadow Alrighty, let's move to over here so this here is also quite a almost a little bit of a it seems complex but it's just a, a series of lines and things and as before it's out of focus all everything that's in focus is here so this is where you're going to put in the effort over there not so much so what i'm actually going to do over there i'm going to take my my cloth and i think in this area i'm going to lay down just a little bit more tonal value like that for now and I'm even just going to take a larger eraser. And I'm just going to lift out. Some of those highlights. Here to get a hair effect, we can't see any hair details, but we can still see that there's a bit of texture and stuff over there. I'm just going to use like a bit of a, a stabbing motion. Maybe I can move that down a bit more. Just a bit of a stabbing motion with the, with the eraser. There seems to be a, a brighter line running along there, so I'm going to erase him. There seems to be a brighter little line running somewhere around there. Let's take a look. We've got this ear that comes there. And that comes there. So around here somewhere that little bit of dark hair curls down. I just want to get the position of this, this little light bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just more or less is good enough. And then just a few little dabs and stabs and that should be enough to suggest that detail over there really quick i'm not putting in any effort whatsoever okay, so there i can see that so this guy is there's another little 
where this ear comes along. He comes along there. Up and down. So it's that little down bit, and then it's high highlighted around just around there somewhere. Something something like that. Okay, we've got here that's the collar. We've got that lovely highlight on it. And there is a just that little dark patch. Over there like that. So Marina is asking if this can be used for, for charcoal as well. Um, yeah, I don't see why not. It's the, pretty much the same techniques. I just find with the charcoal you need to lay it down more and, and leave it. You can't really work it as much as you, what you can with a pencil. And that's why I prefer working with a pencil. What am I looking for? This. Okay, here we've got some guys overlapping that um, that collar over there. So I'm taking this eraser and just stabbing over that darker line. Just to create that that little bit of effect over there. So as you can see I'm not really I'm really not putting in much effort into this simply because I know it's way out in the distance. It's not what you're going to be looking at in the end of the day when this drawing is complete. Yeah some lighter bits over here. If I can just create an impression of his, I'm more than happy. Alrighty, so around over here, it's reasonably dark over there, so I'm actually going to just grab some graphite and just darken up that. I'm sure we'll be able to, to erase that over there. Let's put down maybe a bit of the graphite dust over here to get a a bit more tonal value there. Let's do that. And I'm just going to use that, that little corner of the eraser and just whack it in like this. Every now and again, I'm cleaning my eraser. So I'm wearing a jeans. So I just rub it on the jeans. If you don't, you can also just use a, a, a spare cloth, a nice clean cloth or something like that. There we go. Just a little bit of a, a really rough, but nothing too, no, no skinny lines. Just a really rough, um, stripey effect is more than enough. That's all you want. Just clean out all the the bits that are beyond the dog. Let's see, we find there. And let's just take this collar because he runs all the way down there to the ear. So we need to lift all of that out.
soften that inside edge using my other eraser. So you can sort of think of it as I'm, I'm shading using the eraser in that area there. Okay, and then there's a few little darker bits in this valley. Yeah, that should be fine, eh? I think that should be fine. With a little bit of imagination, we can we can see that. What I want to do here is just push this slightly, because you see it's a little bit broader here than there and there, which doesn't make sense. You've got a, the, the collar is one thickness. So there where that little line has drifted, I'm just adjusting him to get him in his spot. Yeah, that's fine there. All right, let's move on to the ear. So for the ear, it's got a little darker patch over there. So let's maybe just grab a little bit of graphite dust and just darken up that little, just that little corner of the ear over there like that. And there's a little darker bit over there. Yeah, that should be about fine. There is a, a, a really dark patch over there, but it's, it's too thin. I can't get in there with my finger. So we'll have to draw that bit. Before we continue, I want to briefly tell you about my real-time paint and draw along art classes on my website. For a very small amount, you can get access to over 400 paint and draw along tutorials where you pack out your art supplies and you follow along as I show and explain to you in step-by-step -step detail how to complete each project. There are classes in acrylic, oil, watercolor, pencil, soft pastel and even lesser known mediums like pen and ink and scratch boarding. There's a link in the description below. Take a look. You'll be amazed at the awesome classes available there. Alrighty, let's continue from where we left off. So that ear there is not that dark. So I think what we'll do is let's go for a... Let's start off, say, with a B pencil. So I'm sticking with the chisel point for now. Can you see that the hair on the ear is quite soft? Let's maybe go to... Let's go to there for a second. Can you see that the hair on the ears is softer and almost like longer than you've got on the face? So we don't need to create too much of a hair effect in that area. As long as it's got a bit of a, a stripey look to it, we'll be A for a way. Alright, so that's why I'm using the chisel point. And I'm just going to... Stab that in there. Now all I'm looking for to create are the correct tonal values. Nothing else. Just the tonal values. But as I do this... I'm using now this the side part, the, the chisel part of the pencil. So it is giving me stripes. So it's important that you look at the the actual direction. That these hairs are, are on the ear. Okay, so underneath there is you can see the the thickness of the ear. Okay. 
Right, so I'll just go over areas that I need darker. I'm just going to go over it a few more times. I'm not pressing hard. Just a few more times. And can you see you've got that little bit of a stripey effect? And that's enough that we for, for there that we need. Like here's a little bit darker. So just using like little squiggles to get those little darker bits in there. There, I'm just pressing a little bit, little bit harder, but mainly I'm just going over it multiple times to create layers of pencil. Right, can you see you've got this lovely little highlight on there? That's quite cool, hey? So I'm going to take my eraser. And now, again, before I use it, every single time, because he's such a, a fine point, I take him and I rub him on my, on my pants, on my jeans, to get that as, as, as clean as I can. And I'm just going to use like a little bit of a, a stabbing, squiggly motion. And I'm going to lift out that little, that little highlight over there. That. And then in here, you can also just add one or two little stabs in the lighter bits. Just to suggest some hairs, but not too much. In other words, you have one or two hairs that are picking up a little bit of highlight. So Aaron is asking, are the hairs on the face shorter because of perspective? Um, no, not in this case. In, in this case, I think the hairs are physically longer on the ears. Um, but perspective would definitely make a difference. Hey? As you look down a hair, so let's say, for example, this is a hair. So obviously it'll be a, a much longer hair. <laughs> if, you, if you're seeing it here on the forehead, you're going to see the whole length of it. But here, as you're looking down on the nose, it, it, it will appear shorter. So yes, perspective does play a, play a role, but you'll also find that the hairs are not equally long all over the face. The hairs on the ears tend to be longer. And then here by the, the nose, the bridge of the nose, tend to be actually super, super short. All right, so there we've got that fabulous little dark, dark shadow. And also over here, showing us the thickness of the ear. So I'm going to take an 8B. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to really just... You can press hard now. Now you want that full... Tonal value over here. So if you're unsure, maybe you've lost your line a little bit. First start off a little bit softer so that you can erase. But can you see it's all in a, a, a squiggling motion so that if you do see any detail in this dark here, it's always going to look like it's going to look like his. So here's some crazy stuff going on here with these hairs changing direction and yeah you can also see um Adam you can see nicely how long the hairs are over there and you can compare versus there on the nose all right so then here there's that little bit of a little lighter bit running somewhere along there if you do lose your lines like i say you can use this guy your template that you can overlay just to check yourself to see where it goes to see if you're still in the ballpark otherwise what you can do is just judge it as best you can Remember, in two seconds, this dog is going to move. Well, no, I don't think. Not, not him. <laughs> in a minute, he's going to move. Then, uh, 
it's going to look different. So, so don't don't sweat the small stuff. It's not that important. As long as you get it in more or less the right place, I promise you it's going to look correct. At the end of the day, you're not going to have your... There's a nice little highlight running all the way down the side of the face. So I'm just going to lighten that bit, it's just so we don't lose that lovely edge on the face there. Because here on the body, and there's dark. Yeah, so don't sweat the small stuff, you know, if you've... Got it slightly off. You're not going to have the photograph and the and the drawing next to each other hanging up on the wall, right? It's just going to be the this guy. So as long as you've got it more or less, you're a for away. It's fine. Here's a little darker bit over here. It goes lighter, and now we have this funny little wall over here. So let's maybe take our eraser and just start establishing that. These lovely little highlight bits over there. So I'm just really pressing quite hard with the eraser now, just to lift that out. I can rather lift out a little bit too light. We can darken him down again. Yeah, it seems to be somewhere like that. And then you've got, from that highlight there, these hairs run along here. So this is all just some planning lines for myself. And there's that other little highlight running along there. So all these marks that I'm making now are probably just disappear at the end of the day. But Raina's asking, I want to make graphite powder. Should I make some in a lighter value and some in a darker value? Um, you can do that. Just uh, make sure that you mark your your little containers correctly so that you know what's on them. But in general, uh, to be perfectly honest, it's better just to have the darker bits because you can use the, the paper and the cloth to get you to the lighter values. It's just the, the with the paper and the cloth method that I use, you can't get really dark tonal values. And sometimes you do need the darker tonal values and, and large areas of darker tonal values. Okay, so here on the ear, see those those guys over there, they're not quite as light as what they what they are at the moment, if you look on the drawing. So I'm just gently going over them. Just with a squiggly motion until I see that tonal value looks all right, and then and then I'm happy. Okay, so now is when all the different camera angles are going to come in handy, <laughs> because what we're going to do now is here this 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 area we do now need to get a lot of detail in it, because this is the focal point, right? So here you need to get full detail, as much detail as what you possibly can. So let me just get just a scrap piece of paper that I can put on top of my drawing. Let's see, maybe just that. So what you want, I'm probably going to use, it's a dark dog, so I'm probably going to just go for a, say a 6 or an 8B. So this is a 6B that I've got here. Just a standard school sharpener. That's all you need. Um, so Aram is saying that charcoal will give you that the darkest darks. It does, it does. Okay, so I'm going to just sharpen this, this, this guy up. So he is already sharp. So you can turf that. Now what I'll do is I'll usually even just bring this guy back with my little pile of, of graphite dust. Because you're going to take this and you're going to put your... You want that tip to be super sharp. So what you're going to do is you put your pencil inside the sharpener. And now it's not 
all the way in like you normally would. I'm pulling it, let me do that. I'm pulling it slightly out. Can you see there? So he's not fully in and he's pointed upwards. In other words, we're going to make the tip super sharp. So I'm putting him in slightly like this and then I'm just gently turning it with a little bit of a downward pressure over here. Not a lot, just a tiny amount. And can you see what's happening? I'm just super sharpening that tip. So you've got that little bit of graphite dust that it creates. So you can take, now you've got the super sharp tip. Look at that. It's like literally like a needle. Now you can take this graphite dust and just add it to the others. Because it's a dark pencil. So every now and again, you're going to sharpen your pencil like this. The minute you see your hair start thickening up on you, then uh, you're going to do that. All right, so back to the charcoal. Charcoal, it does give you beautiful blacks, but I also find that it gives you... Um, matte colors where with with graphite it does have a little bit of a shine to it so you have to be careful it, it tends to quickly go really really dark so just as we speak i'm just adding a little bit of a shading onto this just on the bottom bits just to make him look round. really quick little shading there like that Okay, so now let's go over to that side camera over there. Okay, so the, 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 the drawing is actually now sideways. Let's put that down there for a second. What you've got is these hairs you're on the face are constantly changing direction. So here, can you see the, the, the directions are like this? And then it's sort of like a fountain. It fountains out this way like this. And here it changes really quickly. It fountains out really quickly to curl around there. Until it points downwards over here. And then it curls back again to follow the cheek. So you've got that happening, that happening, and the opposite happens now on the other side. So you've got all these crazy changes of directions. Now I've tried I've tried to do it like this. It just you don't you do it, but you don't get as good an effect. The way to get a good effect is to, instead of using a flicking motion like this, you use a stabbing motion like that. And that's what we're going to be doing now today. So to get that nice stabbing motion in all these different directions, you got to turn your You've got to turn your paper constantly. So normally when I'm drawing something like this, let me go to the to the normal view. So I'm now working in that area over there. So those hairs are going in this direction. So I'm going to turn it so that it's comfortable for my hand to stab like this. And I'm turning my drawing the whole time as I'm as I'm changing different positions so here in the f in the middle of the forehead i'm working like this here i'm working like this working like this working like this you see that so that's why i've got all these different cameras at crazy angles today so that you don't get seasick as i'm turning this <laughs> as this paper of mine all right so now let's also see if i can zoom in I'll just show you the actual 
the technique from close up. All right, so can you see how sharp that pencil is? So now it's just stabs like this. Now, what happens with the hairs is that they overlap each other. So you need to create overlapping strokes yourself as well. So you're going to work in a bit of a line, and then you, as you come down, you, you change and you go a little bit over the previous guys, and you create a new little line, and then you move along and you create a new line and so on. But all these little lines overlap each other so that in the end of the day you don't actually see the lines. So now initially, all I'm concentrating on is, is getting the the directions right and, and getting that hair texture. So now there's a little trick that I do to keep my pencil sharp. Every now and again, I, I give it a little bit of a, a turn, say an eighth of a turn or whatever. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the next camera, which is my my drawings actually now upside down. Maybe what I can do is that. Let's maybe turf that piece. And these things can be right next to each other. Um, so Marina's saying you get the Mars Lumograph um, 8B, which is a super black. I have something similar. It's it's the Kimberly. Um, it's a 9XXB pencil. <laughs> Let's turn that just the right way around. Oh, wait, I'll, I'll work upside down. <laughs> it's a 9XXB. So it it does. It gives you super black. It's a really good black. But I find it's, it's, it's charcoal black. It's also a matte color. They've had to add an amount of charcoal into the graphite to get it that dark. So you've got that trade-off between super super dark and super black versus not shiny. <laughs> Alright, so when you're doing this, you, you really not do have to be patient. Unfortunately, if you want a good effect, if you want it to look realistic, you now need to be patient and just work. So what I usually do is I put some good music on, crank the volume up, and before you know it, you've got this guy filled up. So I'm going to work on a whole area for now. If you've got any questions in the meantime, fire away. Then I'll answer them. Now, as you're working, look what happens. You've now put some of those darker tonal values down, right? So instantly, those are shining through these marks that you're doing now and giving you already lighter and darker areas without you having to go back and add even more strokes to them. And 
And that's why you do the whole cloth thing in the beginning, just to save you all this time. Marina is asking if I work on pastel matte paper. No, I don't, Marina. I always work on. I, I like to work on a smooth, the the smooth surface. Um, oh no, you do get the the smooth pastel matte paper. I just use normal drawing sketchbooks. And I, I, I work in them. So for a year in the class, what I do is I've got a little A4 sketchbooks that I use, and then I just. Uh, I just carefully remove a page at a time. And so you can see I am I'm physically just doing half half the dog today because it's pointless me doing the whole the whole dog. I would sit here for hours. It'll take a few hours to do this drawing. So all we're going to do here in class is just enough for you to know the technique and, and fully grasp it and have a, a, a good bit amount of practice. Okay, so here we have that tie in between the, the out of focus bits and the in focus bits. So here I'm going to now just start adding really individual little marks. Maybe let's go to, let's go to the sideways camera. We, we, we're quite zoomed in over there, right? Let's just find my place. So this is where the the concentrating <laughs> comes in. And let's do say that. So can you see here we've got detail. So that, that that's where sort of where we are now, eh? The end of the detail. So we've got to tie in where the the detail ends and the out of focus starts. So now instead of going with all your your chopping motion. Now I'm going from the correct direction and I'm adding individual little marks, but I'm pressing super, super soft. So that we're there, I was pressing a bit harder and a more concerted chopping effort. Now it's more like just a little bit of a, a light scribble. So that these marks are just disappearing on us until eventually we get to those little erased marks over there. So here I'm going to start adding larger gaps between these hairs. So now you're not seeing individual hairs anymore, you're just seeing clumps. So that's gone from high detail to medium detail, low detail, no detail. So that's how you get that tie-in and that um, perspective. That you can say atmospheric perspective, <laughs> I, I suppose. All right, so let's go back. I'm going to go back to the upside down camera, which is that one over there. And let's just continue over here for a while. I want to run away down the down the nose just for a little way. Okay, so now my pencil has been working for quite a while and he's starting to blunt himself out. So I'll bring back this guy and my eraser, or my sharpener, sorry, and I'm going to put this guy in. I first just sharpen him normally. And then as I do, I'm gradually pulling backwards and now I'm just erasing with that little bit of downward pressure and the, the pencil not quite in, just sharpening the, just the tip. It's a super light action. I'm pressing with this part of my hand on the back, just a little bit down and then I'm using my fingers to turn the, to turn the pencil. And you can see it's, it's just very gently shaving off little bits off the tip of the pencil. <sighs> so 
go to there. And then I also like to use the, the transparency, which uh, I lay over the drawing. And that way it doesn't smudge what I've drawn before. And turf all your detail. Okay, so here we're getting to an interesting part. Because here you've got this dark little bit and then you've got that little lighter area over there so for now I'm going to avoid that lighter area where the this little brown let's go to the color photo so this is what we actually got there at the moment so we're busy with that so we're adding these darks in around there and that so I'm avoiding that little brown area for now and for no other reason that I don't want to lose it. Okay, so also here as I'm working, depending on the length of the hairs that I'm seeing is how, how much of a chopping motion I'm using. Where the hairs are longer, I'm using a more longer chopping motion. When it's short hair, I'm just doing this tiny little jabs. Especially when you come here to the to the, just the tip of the nose. Those hairs are so short, I'm literally just tapping up and down. Tap, tap, tap like this instead of doing that. To get those super short hairs... To get that effect. Alright, so let's not get carried away. Let's stick to this piece. Eh? Otherwise I'm going to... We forget everything we've been uh, chatting about over here. Right, so here's lots of changes of direction. So just keep checking yourself with these changes. And that's a, a reason why I like to have a full-size reference as I'm working. Because it's easy for me. I can go straight across that direction over here. That direction over here. Here, short little bits and so on. So that I can see where do... Where are these little directions of mine? Okay, so we've already got a bit of dark there because of the um, the cloth work that we've done. But obviously it's not dark enough yet, eh? So now what you're going to do is you're going to just come back in and add more layers of this in this area. So what you're doing is you're filling up more of the paper. So less of the paper shining through and more of the pencil. So two things are happening now. A, you've got that darkening up effect because you're seeing less of the paper. But B, because there's more pencil over there, look there, you can see less detail. And that's exactly the way it works. Okay, so I'm going to do the same over here for these little darker areas too. You've got little areas that are darker because you've already got your, your texture. that you want. So now you just need to come back in and concentrate on the tonal values in each area. So I'm just adding more and more jabs in this area. And this is when you get to this stage because you've got you've got the hair texture there already. Now you're working on tonal values. Now it helps to stand back often. So 
and just keep adding hairs until you've got the correct tonal value and that's why I use the dark pencil and not a light pencil because I'm using the paper for my lighter tonal values because I, I know even a white haired dog that, that's 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 going to give you that light texture that you're looking for no problem okay so can you see here you've got that little bit of a a darker fold there's a small little fold over there so i'm just adding a few more extra jabs in this area here. and then it's darkening up that little area there for me pretty cool hey so simple really if you think about it Okay, like over here. See, we've got that little light area over there. So I'll try and get that dark as close as I can. It's something like that. Then we've got the lighter area, which ends, yeah, probably somewhere around here. So I'm just adding more jabs in this area. And then by default, that area stays lighter, and that lighter area gets gets defined and here it's darker see here I just add more right, my pencil has gone he's not that sharp anymore so let's just give him a good old sharpen right, so I've just given him a, a good old a hard solid sharpen And now look over here, we used, used the cloth to already get us 90% dark in this area. So as I come out of that, with the hair effect, look how natural that looks. It's pretty cool. Really nice. All right, so there I've got the, a little bit of a line that I've erased just to remind me where this little edge over there is but now obviously now that's light and it needs to be dark so i'm going to take my cloth and i'm going to now just lay down that dark over there again and that'll make that erasing disappear on us as much as we need it And now we can come back in there and just add all that, all that dark in there. And as you go over that little bit of erasing line that's still visible, it just eventually just disappears on you. Right, so I'm going to stick to the top here for now. Right, so here we've got this darker patch somewhere around here. Yeah, I do seem to have lost some, some line somewhere. And I'm not panicking about it. I think it's that line there is probably a little bit too long by the looks of it. But I'm not panicking about it. Like I said, in a, in a minute the dog's going to move. It's going to be different. So that's fine. It's good enough. It's close enough. Alrighty, now I'm going to 
continue down the down the nose over here because here we've got these hairs are gradually getting shorter and shorter and shorter so as I'm going along I'm gradually adding shorter and shorter little overlapping jabs so it is going to gradually now take you longer and longer because you're making smaller and smaller dots so just be patient as you do this it's just a small area so it pays to be patient and you all, all the while still keep checking your directions these directions constantly changing there's lots of this is where the fountain starts so there's lots and lots of changes of direction over here okay so in this area here eventually i'm just doing dots the lightest little taps and as before I, i'm concentrating not on the, all those tonal values can you see you've got all those little tonal values and stuff happening there i'm not, I'm not worrying about them whatsoever at the moment I just want to create that correct hair effect. Once I've got the hair effect right, then I'll come back and I'll sort out the tonal value. This is when you kind of wish you had like a little a pencil 3D printer <laughs> gadget that could create this texture for you. Then you can just come back in and add all the nice... Uh, the shadings and stuff that you enjoy doing <laughs> the challenging bits all right so now that i've got that that effect over there now i'm going to sit down and i'm just going to work on getting all these little tonal values and things correct and it's simple just by adding the same old uh the same old marks just more of them or less of them and so on until you've got something similar down there in other words less or more of the paper is shining through Keep turning your pencil so that you I, I I I've got a way that I sort of subconsciously remind myself already is when my tip of the pencil is super sharp, it feels when I'm drawing like it's scratch a little bit of a scratchy feel to it. And the minute it rounds that tip rounds off, that scratchy feeling disappears on me. And that's my cue to turn it and when i keep turning it and it stays um it stays smooth on the paper then i know okay Th this pencil of mine is now he hasn't got a sharp tip anymore so now that's my cue to go and give him a sharpen okay yeah, so now it's just now that you've got all everything correct now you're just concentrating on all these little these little tonal values and things so for example here all this can get more more here its tonal value is not quite correct yet so i'll just keep working on it zero pressure it's the lightest touch at this stage because you've got all the well, the texture is, is already in place. So here and there, you, you've got, it feel, looks like a little bit of a liney effect. So here and there, I will add literally 
aligning effect to get that same look okay so here all these guys are, are, are rainbowing out in their direction so turn your paper Let's just go a little bit wider on that guy. Yeah, let's let's have him around there, eh? Because now we're getting to a point where we need to do the the eyes and stuff as well, hey. So let's put that over there. And let's start with two things. The first one is let's get that tie in sorted over there. And then we'll work our way down to the eye. All right, so can you see I've left this well light? So now I'm going to come back in here just with short little flicks just to get the a bit of a hair effect. And I'm checking myself and I'm comparing with what I've got on the on the reference photo versus what I've got on my drawing and I'm asking myself do I need to add any more marks or am I done do I need to add any more marks or am I done the whole time that's all I'm doing and if you've maybe put too many marks then come back in with your eraser And just with a flicking motion. You raise out some hairs. So you have 100% control over your drawing at all times. All right, so let's work down here. And let's move down onto the eye. So what I'll do is I'm first going to concentrate on just getting that little edge there sorted. If I get that sorted, then generally I'm happy. If I'm not happy with that, I'm going to first fiddle until I get that shape correct. Because everything else goes around that. And it's not always a perfect circle, as you can see. That there is formed by the eyelid. This here is formed by that little uh, little piece of skin over there by the tear duct. That there is formed by the the shape of the bottom eyelid. Nothing is shaped by the by the shape of the eyeball itself, because that's behind all the skin. Alright, so here we've got this nice and dark. And yeah, it's dark, but I'm first going to put it in a little bit lighter than it what, what it needs to be. Because I'm interested in getting those shapes and stuff right. First. So if it's wrong, and I've put it in too dark, I can't fix it. But if, I, if I'm a little bit patient, and I first just make sure I've got all these little shapes and things correct... Then it's quick to, to darken things up. There's a little bit of a highlight over there. So I'm very carefully leaving that little bit of paper exposed. And just as I say that, <laughs> I go draw over it. <laughs> just a little bit of paper. Can you see there's a tiny sliver of a highlight over there? Right, so now once I've got that that shape and I'm, and I'm happy with that shape, yeah, then it's cool. Now I can come back in and I can 
darken up the darks and I can press hard because I know now all those things are are the way they are where they need to be and they're not going to change or move so I can get that all correct all right so here for the inside of the eye I'm first going to go over to a, a a harder pencil let's say an HB I've got a little highlight running across there and a little highlight running across there. So I'm going to plot them out so that I can avoid them. And I'm just going to color the rest in very gently. Okay, so now I know and I can see where those two little highlights need to be. Because the eyeball is round, is going to get a shading so i've got to take a look and see where does that shading happen in this case is darker over here on these outside edges like that then is lighter over there and the way i know whether i've got enough tonal value or enough contrast over there is by looking at those highlights do those highlights stand out enough or not yet if the answer is not yet then I know I need to go darker until they do stand out enough because that's white paper I can't get any lighter than that so I'll just keep fiddling away until I've got that correct which seems to be about there so I'm happy with that I'll stop there there's also that little highlight, so I'm leaving him. There's a thinner little highlight, so I'm leaving him. Yeah, that should be fine. And then there's another little highlight in front of this guy over there, so I'm carefully leaving him open. And then from here, it's back to hair effect. So there, these hairs are, again, super, super short. Often this is skin. There, there aren't even hairs here yet. So if it's skin, I'll, I'll just do plain little shadings for a short while. And then I'll gradually go over to my hair effect again. Sort of similar to what you've done by the tip of the nose to get that kind of a tie in over there. So here's lots of things that happen in this area. So the first one is I'm just working on that shading over there. Here I can see this is too dark so I'm just lightening that up. And you'll often get little secondary highlights on that um, on that edge of that eyelid over there. It sort of shows you that 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 eyelid rounds off like this. It's not flat; it rounds off, and because it rounds off, you get that little highlight on that curl over there. Then you've got these super short hairs and actually skin and the hair from the bridge of the nose. Let's just move that on slightly like that. Like there we go. Meet. So here these hairs are going in this direction, but these hairs underneath, they're going in that direction over there. So here I usually tend to just sort of draw those guys and then I'll negatively draw there where these guys meet i'll just flick them in there like that and that gives you that nice little
transition or meeting point like that. All right, so now we can start spinning back up again. Because now these hairs here are longer. But lots of transitions, lots of angle changes. So you have to really look carefully. to get this little rounding and fountain effect here correct. So at this stage there's absolutely no pressure on the pencil. The, the, the darkness of the pencil is enough. I'm constantly turning the pencil and I'm feeling for that scratchy effect. The minute he stops scratching is my cue to Turn the pencil. Or sharpen him again. And I'm nearly at the point where I do need to sharpen mine. So let's get him sorted. Okay, you're starting to see the effect already. Okay, let's do the tie in here at the top of the eye. So it's the same things, just the same as at the bottom. Lots of hairs. So if you're doing a dark that's a bit of a bigger drawing than this, you'll you'll often now see that there's um, a few distinct eyelashes or even eyebrow hairs as well. So check out for them. Add them in. Here's also often that little dark. Sometimes it goes this way, and with other dogs it goes straight out. So just keep an eye out for that as well. Right, so now once you've got your texture, come back and sort the tonal value. Just keep going over and over and over until you've got the tonal value correct. And if necessary, come back and lift out any high any any tonal values that are now gone too dark. Okay, so here's lots of lots of little changes of angles. I'm constantly checking myself. Am I getting these little angle changes? Here, a little bit darker, so I'm adding just extra little dark stabs to get that tonal value correct over there. Alrighty, we may as well go up just to this edge over here, hey, then you can see how that that tie-in works over there. So yeah, these hairs just seem to go sort of shorter and shorter again. So I'm actually literally going over to to shadings. So now I'm not stabbing anymore, I'm just shading. But I'm shading in the direction that th I can see those hairs are. Because we're now curling away from the focal point. 
So we can add less and less detail. So this area here can go quicker and quicker and quicker. It's fine. Same as what you add on the top of the head. This is the same thing you're going to do here. Less, less detail. Just suggestions of hairs. No individual hairs whatsoever. If you put too much detail here, you take away the attention from the focal point. So don't even try to put in the detail here. I know it's tempting because you, you, you sort of, from there, you've got yourself into that, that routine of adding detail and looking for detail and stuff. If you can't see the detail in the photo, that's your cue. Don't invent the detail. It's not necessary. If you invent the detail, you're adding detail that isn't there. And that messes with your, you, you think you, you maybe, you, you think, you know what, I'm actually, I'm making this better. Look at all this lovely detail I'm adding. No, you're not. There isn't detail there. So by, um, by adding detail that isn't there, what's happening is that you're not actually hurting yourself because you're losing some of the perspective and the depth in the drawing. Yeah, so there's a little little lighter bit over here. So I'm just erasing out lighter bits. Just with a zigzag motion, but no no individual flicks. It's just a the same zigzag motion that I'm using with a pencil. Okay, and I'm just working on the, the tonal values to get them correct, because this whole area here needs to go darker. It can be quite dark over here. That's all I'm worried about now, just those tonal values. Tonal values are important wherever you are because the tonal values show you the depth and the dimension. I think this year, even with all of that, it's still too much detail, so I'm going to use my blending stump and I'm going to blend all that detail away. I don't want it. Go away. <laughs> Yeah, cool. So I can still go darker in up that area over there. But I think you, you're getting the, the idea. So let's move on to the next bit. So maybe for now, let's just do this. Because it's nice to stand back and see what you've done every now and again, eh? So let's just do that. And let's see, maybe I can... Take this photograph and find the roughly to let's do that. So I think we're we're roughly at Yeah, we're roughly there, right? Okay, so let's add just this little bit of detail in here just to bridge the gap. Okay, so can you see the effect that you're getting? All right, so you, you'll continue all the way down here. Let's tackle that nose. Okay, so generally with a nose, I'm going to start inside the nostrils because they're the darkest bits. Can you see I'm not starting dark? I'm just establishing those the positions. Yeah, 
everything you do here in the beginning is always just about like sort of plotting it out and planning. There's that little center bit of the nose. And then here's the transition between the front and the top. Seems to me somewhere there in that vicinity. Okay, now let's uh, slowly darken this up. That'll allow us to add total value over there. And then here, got this little bit, which does something like that. Something like that. Okay, if you're happy with those bits, you can darken them up. And now let's just start doing a basic shading first. In other words, I'm going to ignore all those little dimples and things that I'm seeing on the on the nose. The nose is quite a complex little area. So I really first just concentrate on getting the the basic shading and the shape of it right. So here now you can use whatever pencil you need to. So, you know, don't be shy. Flip, flip over to softer pencils and harder pencils as you need. I'm watching purely just tonal values, basic shadings, nothing else, basic shadings. While you're watching the class, please hit the like button. I know it only takes a second, but it really helps me because it tells YouTube that this class that you're watching is worth showing to other artists and that they'll benefit from it as well. Then also leave a comment. Tell me what you thought about the class. Let me know what other classes you want me to do. And of course, if you've got questions, ask them below and I'll answer them for you. This is just a little darker bit that's on the side of the nose. Like there's actually hair and stuff. Yeah, so I think over there we'll have to go over to some, uh, let's say even just a, let's try an HB and see how it goes. Yeah, I think he's too dark. I'm going to go over to an H. Everything is quite light over here, hey. So in this area, it's sort of a, com a combination between skin and uh, and hair. Bit of a no man's land there. So here it can go darker before we add the, the, the 
top of the nose area. So you'll find that what happens is in that transition over there, because you've got the nostrils, it goes like two little like bumps. And then from there, it quickly shades darker towards the inside of the nostril. So it's a shading. Inside, it's super black because the light can't get in. And then it quickly shades lighter as it curls outwards like that. And here on the bottom, those two little bits over there always point upwards towards the sky. Leaving you with that little that little highlight over there. So it's all those little contrasts between that super black on the inside and then the quick curling out towards the, the outside. And they're really light on top. So here as well, it curls in underneath, and that's why this is dark. So I'm adding a shading over here into from this flat total value over there into dark over there, and into dark into that little little bit over there. So depending on how the light is, sometimes this is quite prominent you can see those um, shadings distinctly and then other times like in this drawing it's not that obvious it's not that easy to see but if you know they're there then you can look out for them and that makes it a lot easier for you to draw this because you're looking out for those specific shadings Alrighty, so this front piece is nearly at the tonal value it needs to be. When I get to this last stage, it'll almost work in a bit of a cross-hatching kind of effect. And that'll give me that little bit of a dimple feel on that front bit. Okay, let's go back to the 2H now that we have enough, hopefully enough tonal value over there. And I'm going to just add a flat little bit of a shading over most of this. Except that real sunny area over there. We'll avoid that because we, we're just going to have to erase it again anyway, so that would be pointless. But here, here we don't mind erasing a little bit. Okay, so now I'm just going to use a bit of a stabbing and dabbing effect. Very lightly using my, my blending stump all over this area over here. And that's going to start to give us that, um, that dimpled effect. It's just starting to add some texture. Okay, let's see. This area over here can go darker a little bit. There. And 
is an area that can go lighter. This needs to get quite a bit darker. So you can see you have to be quite patient when you when you're working with a nose. It's a, it's a complex little little area. Probably the most difficult bit to draw on the whole dog, for me personally, is always the nose. Because you've now got all these crazy tonal value changes and so on. Just a few wiggles and squiggles over here also just to just to help with the just flattening out that over there. Right now I'm gonna just add some little hair bits around here. Because that will now just help you with the where the nose ends. So I'm just adding a basic little shading there for now. No real hair effect or anything like that. Alright, so now to get that uh, dimply effect, I'm going to take my eraser and I'm just going to, just like with a stabbing motion, add little dabs that I'm erasing out of this. Every now and again, clean the, clean the eraser. If you're working on a big drawing, then you can literally erase individual dimples. But when it's a small drawing like this, just just create an effect. It's good enough. Alrighty, let's time in now with this over here. So here now you'll often find that you've got too much detail. Because you were so in, in the thick of things with the details above it, that you've maybe still gone a little bit too large with your dots and stuff. So just come back in and keep adding more detail so that it becomes almost more of a shading. That'll help you with get getting rid of all that that detail that you still seem to have in this area. Remember, as you add more over it, the less detail you have.
Yeah, that should be fine over there. All right, so moving down here by the by the mouth, we've got. Let's see. I've lost a little line over there, so I'm going to take this, put him over there, and now I can see roughly that line needs to go there. That's where the mouth, the top and the bottom of the mouth meet. Okay, so that comes down here, and it forms a little bit of a. Over there, and we've got this rock, which is running along there, like that. Alrighty, so everything over here is dark. I'm not even going to bother doing anything. I'm straight up just going to color it in, almost to the top of the mouth. Almost. Almost to the edge. Because you've got those little overlapping hairs. And that's why I'm not going all the way to the edge. Just to there is great. Right, now, then, now we can erase this hard line that we've got there. Because we don't want a hard line there. I know where it is now. So I'm going to color him in. Because I can use this guy as, a, as an estimate. Just to get a nice solid tonal value. You could just as well have used your cloth here as well now again. Just to fill that back in. Now I'm going to reverse draw that edge over there. So I'm going to flick upwards. So check your check your directions because they they change here on the side they they're going more sideways and then from here they start flicking outwards because now you're working from that edge. So now I'll work from in outwards again. Here, and now it's back to negatively drawing. And now that you flick them in, now you can just shorten them up to whatever length you need those little hairs to be. Just by coloring in in between. Okay, so let's add lots of little hairs over here. I just need to sharpen my pencil quickly. He's not scratchy anymore, so that tells me I need to sharpen him. Okay, so this little area is quite interesting, because can you see you've got all these little dots and stuff from the... Um, where the whiskers come out? So what you want to do is just initially ignore that whole dotty spotty effect. Okay, so again, I'm just going to add all the way up here to the halfway mark. Just going to ignore that dot dotty spotty effect. And I'm just going to work on getting the hair effect itself. So lots of little angle changes again so really look carefully let me turn this guy and go over to the side view can you see how short little jabs I'm adding these are super short here's over here really really short See you, Rana. Thanks for joining us. So a lot of these hairs are, are really quite light, eh? So I'm not adding these hairs 
super close to each other. I'm leaving enough white space between them. But not so little that we don't have a hair effect anymore. So I'm trying to do this as quickly as I can. And I'm holding my pencil really light. It's no no pressure on the pencil. Don't need to add any pressure. So I'm full on ignoring any kind of spots and dots, just getting texture down here. Just texture. Only concern of mine now is just to get the directions right. That's all I need to concentrate on. And that's nice because it makes things easier for you. You don't have to think textures, tonal values, all those things all at once. Yeah, and that's why adding adding yourself some good music on while you're doing this, you, you don't really notice it. It goes reasonably fast. I mean, look, they have done that whole area. And I don't know how long it's taken. It hasn't taken that long. So here we do have that light and the dark tie in, which is fine. We'll first just concentrate on getting the Yeah, let's work to there because we do now have that little dark bit that comes down there, which I didn't put in with a cloth for some for some bizarre reason. So I think I'm going to grab the cloth straight up, pick up a little bit of, and we've got that guy is coming down there, and this. I think let's even grab a little bit of uh so I'm working sideways so if I get it a little bit wrong you'll you'll forgive me. I'm even just using a bit of graphite dust to get that darker over there. Yeah, I think that's reasonably reasonably close. Okay, back to the pencil. Because these hairs here are, are now also at a different different direction. Because these guys are coming out like this. So it's not too dark. So I'm going over to erasing some, some hairs. There's also lighter guys over here. I think that's why people like doing animal portraits as a, uh, as commissions. Because you sort of just get into your into your own thoughts. You have got your music on or whatever. You get into your thoughts. Because it's not hard work. You know, once you've got the hang of it, the, the techniques, you understand the techniques and you've mastered them. Then it's literally just a case of 
just relaxing and enjoying yourself. It can be quite quite therapeutic. All right, so now we need to get this little tie in over here. Now we were now we're concentrating on these little spots and dots. So I'm adding just more little more little hairs in those areas. Am I getting them perfect in the correct spot? Nah. More or less. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, and it's going darker towards the the tip over here. So now we're working on that tonal value. And it's a bit of a shading, eh? Because you've got really dark on the tip over there. And then it's going lighter and lighter. So you're just adding less and less little little hairs. And there's a few like really light hairs over there. So I'll also just use my eraser and just flick out a few of those really light hairs. To, to give me a, a nice big contrast between the the lighter ones and the darker ones. Okay, there, those light ears over there, is dark behind it, so I need to negatively draw the edges of those hairs over there like that. Get these in over here, and these guys, we haven't drawn them in yet either, so let's quickly whack them in. And that should complete the side of the the side of the face. So look there, we've now drawn half of the dog in two hours, and that includes explaining time and so on. So to draw this dog would probably take you just less than yeah, make it it's two hours twenty minutes. So yeah, two hours. Yeah, two hours. So it'll take you maybe just just over or just under four hours to do all this guy. And now let's say you're charging your customer, I don't know, three hundred, four hundred dollars. Sounds like a fair price. It's not bad pay for the day. Okay, so here I've got that little lighter edge, which I'm just lightening up. All right, let's go to here and see what we've got. There you go. Okay, so the main thing that you want to look out for now is just um, whiskers. This guy doesn't have any really light whiskers. It's got a few little dark ones. You're just going to whack them in with a with a pencil. If he has light whiskers, then you would lob off the tip of your uh, pen-shaped eraser so that you have a really nice sharp edge on that because obviously once you've used it for a while, it rounds off, right? So then you're going to lob off the tip of that so you have a really nice sharp edge. And in one long solid stroke, you just go zip, and you with a nice good pressure on that uh, eraser, and you just whack and you erase out of that um, whisker. And often here as well, you would have a few little long guys. So you just put them down with a nice sharp edge of that um, eraser, and you just whack. Nice, confident, solid pressure stroke. Alright, so here, I, um, I can show you how to do that. It only takes a few minutes. It's really quite easy to do that that stone effect. So that stone effect, let's put him down over there so you can see what it looks like. So that stone effect is like that. I'm just going to take just a little bit of, um, a little bit of 
graphite dust on the cloth and I'm just going to tap it around there look I'm 90% there already so I'm just tapping it in random in a random fashion sometimes I'll maybe even just use a a jab like this as well because I, I do see it does seem to be a little bit downward kind of motion or downward like kind of stripes and stuff and I can grab a pencil I see there's a there's a bit of a A bit of a crack over there and there's another little mark over there so i'm just using just wiggles and squiggles and stuff a little darker bits in yeah just like that that's probably about enough for for what we've got there now and you can also just use your um your blending stump take that rub it on the paper to pick up some graphite and you can just add a few little random dabs dashes and marks like this and you can see it goes really quickly and all we're doing is creating that that really interesting little texture over there And now the same thing, you're going to take your eraser and erase a few little random marks. Does it need to look the same as the, the picture? No, man, it's, gee, nobody even knows, no, even, nobody, nobody, even the people that live there will never know what this cement looks like. Unless you've spent time uh, lying next to that cement, which you shouldn't be doing. Nice little bit of a highlight on here. And I think that little sunny bit on that tip over there will give you a nice little contrast between the the edge and the dog. Look at that. And it's the same thing for the rock. Same thing. Okay, so we go to there. And we go back to back to there. And there you go. Now you know how to draw a dark haired dog. So I think we'll end the lesson here. If you enjoyed the lesson, please take a look at the rest of my classes. I'll leave a link for you below. I've got hundreds of other classes in pencil drawing. There's oil painting, there's acrylic, you name it. There's even scratchboard drawing. So go and take a look. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.